Hey guys, welcome back to Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan and today I'm going to be talking to you about the difference between two key neurological terms, dysarthria and dysphasia. Now both of these terms are used to describe speech problems in the body, but I'm going to be talking to you about the real differences between the two and how you might be able to recognize signs of these for your neurological patients. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so dysarthria and dysphasia. Let's start with dysarthria. Dysarthria is a problem in articulating speech due to a motor control problem. So here, your patient may know exactly what they want to say. They completely understand the language that they want to say. However, the motor control of the muscles used to generate that speech are affected and therefore you may find that they slur their words and as a result it can make it difficult to understand. So once again the key concept here is that it is a motor disorder. Next let's move on to dysphasia or aphasia as you will sometimes hear. Now dysphasia is more of a problem to do with language. It's a language disorder and there are two main types of dysphasia. Expressive dysphasia and receptive dysphasia. Let's start with expressive dysphasia. So expressive dysphasia is a disorder that occurs in Broca's area of the brain, located in the frontal lobe, often in the left hemisphere, which is responsible for language production. This is why expressive dysphasia is also referred to as Broca's dysphasia. In this form of dysphasia, the comprehension or understanding of language is generally preserved, but instead the patient may well have difficulty in producing language, formulating sentences, placing the right words together. It is sometimes referred to as effortful speech because the patient has to work so hard to actually be able to tell you what they want to tell you. These patients may have difficulty with grammar and may utter short sentences or say the same word repeatedly or speak a sentence but omit really important words. We then have receptive dysphasia, which is a disorder said to occur in Wernicke's area of the brain and thus is sometimes referred to as Wernicke's dysphasia. Patients with this type of dysphasia can speak what appears to be fluent language because they speak with normal speed, tone and it's not effortful. However, the words don't make sense. Thus, once again, it's a language problem. So here, the patients may use words that don't exist or use words that sound similar to the word they actually want to say, like saying mood instead of food, or saying link instead of drink. Or sometimes the words may make no sense at all. Your patient may think that they are saying, I want to go for a walk, but instead they say something that sounds like a completely different language. They may also have difficulty in understanding language, i.e. when you speak to them or when they read something, they can't grasp what is being said or read. It may also be that their deficits present themselves when they are writing. They may try to write something, but again, it doesn't make sense on paper. So out of all of that, the two things that get confused most commonly are dysarthria and expressive dysphasia. So let's talk about that a bit more. So dysarthria is a motor control problem, whereas expressive dysphasia is a language problem. So with dysarthria, your patient may know exactly what they want to say, they may understand the words they want to say, but it's a motor control problem, and therefore the muscles controlling their speech aren't working well, which means that when your patient goes to speak, it may be difficult to understand them. And expressive dysphasia is a language disorder. So your patient may know what they want to say, but they have real difficulty in expressing themselves. They have real difficulty in putting the sentences together and therefore that can be what makes their language difficult to understand. And so I really hope that that clears up the differences between those terms. So once again, everyone, we really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more from Clinical Physio, then head to the description below so you can find out details of our website, www.clinicalphysio.com, where you'll find loads more educational resources for physiotherapists. My name's Khalid Maidan. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you really soon, right here on Clinical Physio.